Andrea, congratulations for Stay the Night. Thank you. Sorry, yours is gig, right? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so, so let's ask that, you know, that obligatory question that all, everyone always asks is, why were you attracted to this project? What, what initially brought you on? Um, initially, Renica. She's the director and writer of it. Um, and I worked with her before on a show called Kim's Convenience. Um, and I'm such a fan of her as a filmmaker and a uh, person. And those are kind of two very important things for me, especially when I'm looking at uh, being a part of something. Well, most excellent. Have, have you done a lot of romantic dramas like this before? Before this? No. No, not at all. This was the first project that I had done where I think I, I think this is the first project I'd done where I was the actual lead of a feature. So mm -hmm. um, no, I hadn't done a lot of romantic dramas. At that, well, at that point. <laughs> well, then it's it's most uh, certainly different uh, for, for for yourself and quite an experience then. Yeah, it was very. Um, it was a lot of fun and very challenging, uh, especially because this film it's set over twenty four hours. Um, mm. So, which means that we started at all hours of the day so sometimes we would start at like 2 a.m or like 2 p.m 4 a.m 6 p.m um and because it is the first shoot i'd done where i was needed on set almost every day um i had to make sure that i didn't get sick uh and i was having like herbal medicine that my mom was giving me trying to sleep a lot <laughs> but overall yeah it was very rewarding it was a rewarding experience I mean, was was it uh, was it quite an experience in a way where I want to say you were in almost every scene or most of the scenes, ninety more than ninety percent of the scenes. I think so. Um, yeah, a lot of them. I was in. Uh, yeah, I bet you it was. Like, yeah, maybe around ninety percent. Um, yeah, which was exciting for me as well because it gave me an opportunity to learn a lot and um get to follow a character from beginning to end which was fun um yeah well then tell us about your character grace because uh she 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 is very uh i want to say shine reserved in her own way yeah uh, I would say she uh, she is this very hardworking kind of perfectionist young professional. Um, but maybe the shyness too comes from her being very protective of her heart, and because of that, it kind of leaves her at this standstill in both her career and her life, um, her love life, which is kind of where we start the film. Um, you have this person who has a lot of potential and she wants to fulfill that as well but she kind of needs to open herself up first for, for for yourself how relatable is grace to you and what was it easy to uh, get into the headspace of that character um with grace i really connected to the fact that she had this need to connect with other people as well and so I kind of approached the role, uh, well, Renica gave me a bunch of uh, movies to watch that might inspire something with the character. And then I kind of approached it more instinctually. Um, and I think because we were filming it um, in the night, like the mood kind of helped me get into character and obviously working with the great act other actors that were involved. Um, so it was not too difficult to get into character, but it definitely was hard because um, Grace also in the film emotionally, she's kind of like this. Um, so that part was hard. Ab ab absolutely. 
Now, one of, one of the things I love about this film, obviously, I'm a little biased, is, you know, the rep representation, Asian representation in, in mm -hmm. cinema. And you represented as an um, Asian lead in a romantic role, which, which, is, uh, which is not often seen um, here um, in, in this type of business. Could you talk about that? Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think what was great about this film as well is that um, Grace was just a person and a fully kind of multi-dimensional person that anyone could identify with, um, which I think is what is great about films, is that ability for people to connect um, from all different backgrounds. And I think Definitely, for sure. It's, I'm so appreciative to be able to represent that. And there's definitely way more stuff that needs to be done. Great. Um, another thing that uh, this film also uh, presented was that uh, Grace, um, Grace's virginity and, um, and sex scenes. How did you want to basically want to say approach, you know, that, that type of taboo subject? that's not usually shown? I mean, for me, I wanted to approach it in a way where not to judge it, because personally, I think if you are a 27-year-old version or a 60-year-old version, who cares, as long as it's your choice. Um, so for Grace, I wanted it to be her choice, which I try to... Um, I just wanted it to be her choice. Absolutely, and uh, and I, I correct me if I'm wrong. Was this all filmed in uh, Toronto itself? Mm hmm. It was all filmed in Toronto. Yeah. So 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 it's almost like a like a love letter to uh, Toronto because you you kind of visit a lot of places um, through uh, through Toronto. Yeah, we got to visit a lot of really cool places in Toronto, and um, it's actually, it's a film that was filmed in Toronto and also set in Toronto, so that part was really cool, because a lot of times things are filmed there, but then set somewhere else. So in, in Toronto, there's a lot of things to do in, in the middle of the night, <laughs> or, <laughs> or, or, is that, or is that just something that, uh, you know, the, the film was just trying to uh, reach out for? I actually think there are a lot of things to do in the middle of the night. When I first went to Toronto, I walked, I was walking at like one in the morning or something. And I remember feeling very safe because there were so many people out. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, it was a very odd experience. Um, <clears throat> and they do actually have a lot of things that are open in the middle of the night, like restaurants and stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so hitting restaurants, hitting bars, that's, that's a typical thing there yeah, I mean, at, at, at one or two o'clock in the morning I, I i know we don't we don't really have much i i feel like everything closes by 10 p.m <laughs> <laughs> whereabouts are you i'm in fresno california oh okay um yeah i haven't officially done the whole like walk around but i remember yeah i do remember walking in the middle of the night and thinking this is weird because i there's a lot of people out <laughs> <laughs> now you're on how, how, what was it like working with uh joe your on-screen partner who plays carter in the film oh it was great most of my scenes are with him so it would be uh, i was very fortunate that he himself is awesome to work with he's very talented and i don't know if you've ever met him but he's very sweet and he's very funny and he's honestly one of my favorite people <laughs> So how, how did you two develop the chemistry? Because chemistry is actually very important in, in rom romance films like this. Yeah, I think it came naturally um, with the help of the script as well. I think a lot of it just came naturally. Great. And what do you know about hot? Ooh. <laughs> enough, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, I mean, I grew up in Canada, <laughs> <laughs> so hockey was a huge thing. Um, I'm more of a, if I watch a game, I need to watch it live. Uh -huh. Yeah, but otherwise I don't really watch it. <laughs> oh, hockey? Well, if it makes you feel any better, I, I have never seen a hockey game myself, so I don't oh, know. Oh, no? Yeah. <laughs> if you watch one, watch it live. I do, I am more, if they, um, I'm probably what they call a bandwagoner. If they get into things, I start to get riled up. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so more, more than likely, you don't have a favorite team yourself. To... <laughs> no. The only ones I would know are the Canadian ones, which are like the Canucks and Maple Leafs. <laughs> <laughs> well, at, at least you know how to skate. Maybe that is that a requirement for every Canadian is that they, they know how to ice skate or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even with ice skating, I only know enough <laughs> to get by. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Um, in the film, uh, Joe actually does play hockey um, in real life, the actor. Um, so in the film, I'm shown not being able to skate that well, and I didn't have to act that hard for that one. So so did, so did that skating scene made you nervous? <laughs> the, the spinning. <laughs> oh, no. I guess because Joe was uh, like constantly with me, so and he knows how to skate really well, so I felt safe with him. Unless he let go, then that's when I would have been like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> but then that that would have made it a romantic comedy if that actually happened. No, I know. <laughs> the ambulance comes at like six in the morning. <laughs> it turns into a completely different film. <laughs> that that would have been hilarious. Yeah. Well, um, for, for, for yourself, after getting this uh, first romantic film un under your belt, would, would you like to stay in this genre or you or you like to do other type of uh, films in many genres? I'm open to all of it. Um, I always like to try to, every time I take on a new project, I always try to make it something that's different from the last thing, um, just to kind of challenge myself and always be nimble <laughs> with the acting and um and just just a personal question how did you get into acting why do you love you know this business so much i mean i got into it i think because i grew up watching tv i used to be called the human tv guide so i always knew what was on <laughs> <laughs> So it kind of, I always wanted to act from a young age. Um, and I kind of got into it the way a lot of people have just by taking classes um, and then eventually, and then auditioning. And then I got Kim's Convenience and that kind of changed my life. I was gonna say Kim, Kim's Convenience probably what was so big at put, put you on a map in, in its own way. Yeah, for sure. and. Um, <clears throat> I think a lot of opportunities came as a result of that. And it changed also in the fact that I get recognized more. I've gotten recognized by just my voice, which is weird. <laughs> I didn't know I had a recognizable voice. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, the great thing about that show is that a lot of the fans that come up are so kind and amazing. And it kind of is representative of, of the show itself as well. Um, yeah, it was really, I feel so honored to have been part of that. Well, that's because fans adore and, and love you from Kim's Convenience, which is, which is terrific because you, you made a, you, you were part of a show that actually affected a lot of uh, Asian Americans um, over here on this side of the border too, so. Yeah, and I, I mean, as an actor, I feel like such a small part of it because it's there's a lot of people involved. Um, uh, but it's, I feel, yeah, I feel a lot of gratitude towards getting to be a part of something like that. Most excellent. And let, let, let me wrap it up with one more thing in there. Is, uh, is what's coming up next for you? Um, 
sleep. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, I have, I'm currently recurring on an ABC show called Million Little Things, um, which I'll be returning to. And then I have a couple movies, um, a horror film and another romantic drama um, coming up, but I don't know when. Oh, well, it's, it's not, it's not, it's, it sounds like you're still going to go with, with that to past midnight work schedule. So good luck with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I fell in love with working at 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> well, say it. excellent. Well, Andrea, thank you very much uh, for uh, speaking to us about this stay the night. Hopefully I get to do this conversation again with you. Yeah, thank you so much. You were so nice. Hey, thank you. <laughs> Next time.